Hello. Well, that, that's not a creepy hello. All right. <laughs> hello. Did you mean like that's not a creepy hello? Yeah. It is? But sarcastically. It oh. was sort of like a hello. Hello. Um, this is the very first uh, podcast on Elm Street. Very cool. Uh, we found this uh, aptly styled room. I think it's, uh, it's indicative of like a creepy basement where you might get a little... Uh, there's a witch making people stand in the corner. Right there's, a, there's a witch making people stand. Where is she? I, I am, uh, is that in reference to Blair Witch? Sure. Have you guys seen Blair Witch? Oh, spoiler alert. There's a, there's a, uh, a right at the end, there's a person who stands in a corner. And nothing happens, but it's still really scary. Yeah. It's like less is more, because it's obscure. It's like how they have little kids in horror movies. They don't even have to do anything, but the obscurity of it being a child with like so much wisdom behind their eyes is really freaky. Yeah. The fact that they're not doing much. If a baby was crying in the corner, uh, so what? But if the baby just looks at you like this. Yeah, if the baby's just looking. Creepy. If you're looking, we're cooking with fear. That's uh, my guest today. My first guest is <laughs> Mr. Paul Agata from Hawaii. Now, I always thought that place didn't exist, but Paul, would you like to testify? It does exist, in fact. Indeed, it does. Uh, it's one of the 50 United States of America. Wow. Okay. And it's the 50th. It's the final state. Is it actually it is the final state? Yes. Whoa. I mean, well, as of yet. And we that, may, that sounds we like the end of a horror series. The final state. Yeah. It, uh, you guys got volcanoes, right? Live volcanoes. Live volca Have you been into a live volcano? Uh, not, not yet, but the dream lives on. The dream lives on. Have you? Write in if you've ever been inside a volcano. Um, Paul is an international headliner. He is, without a doubt, one of my favorite comedians. That's not me, uh, uh, that's not me blowing smoke up your Hawaiian ass. He's done some pretty cool things. You've done some pretty cool spots. You've done the Late Late Show? Sure. Sure. Uh, my crowning achievement, I think, is uh, a movie called Porn Dogs with Ron Jeremy. Oh, wow. Yeah. The Ron Jeremy. The Ron Jeremy. Wow. The biggest dick in the Jewish community, as I think they call him. Um, I saw something about Damon Wayans, too. Sure, there was a movie. Uh, it was Marlon actually... Marlon Wayans. Yeah, Damon Wayans wrote, produced, directed it, and started it. Oh, this uh, is Porn Dogs. No, 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 no. This oh. is something else entirely. Okay. This is, it was a movie called Behind the Smile. Okay. And uh, it was a drama about the world of stand-up. Oh. Which was interesting. That sounds cool. Is this available in the uh, internet? Well, it was a passion project of his, and he financed it himself. Okay. Uh, shot it, produced it, and then uh, it premiered at the HBO uh, festival in Aspen. Wow. And uh, and then he never got distribution or never. I, I don't know what happened. I thought it would, Marlon wow. put on a hell of a performance. In that I movie. bet he did. He's a great guy. Yeah. Forget oh, forget GI Joe. Forget white chicks. Yes. But yes. Requiem for a Dream. Yes. Come on. That's great. Ass to ass. I watched that scene on repeat the other night for yeah. ages. <laughs> it's so disturbing. The old guy ass to yeah. ass. Ass to ass. There was um people were looking. People were trying to work out for a while who that actor was because apparently he was uncredited. Um, so on all the forums, he's just referred to as the ass guy, which is a, I think that's his crowning achievement. Did I see something through that you did a film called like The Asian Guy? It was a superhero movie called uh, The Amazing Asian. The Amazing Asian. I figured it didn't matter how I said it, it wasn't gonna be as racist. It's, uh, it was a friend of mine who, uh, it was his first, uh, movie. It's a short film, mm -hmm. uh, and then he went on to he enjoying great success right now oh, wow. as a commercial director. Oh, cool! Yeah, like ads, advertisements. Yes. Very cool. Well, let's get into the uh, to the thick of it. As I, uh, this is me doing all these. We that's just because I'm very nervous. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, it's called a podcast on Elm Street. Uh, it was either that or I th I thought about um, the Hills Have Eyes. Oh, the Hills Have Podcasts. Oh, uh, you know, I've thought about this, like, when people try and put the word podcast into the podcast name, like, putting it in the wrong place, like, sure. podcast hills have eyes, or, like, the podcast have eyes, that actually works. But, uh, I was tossing up between Elm Street or the podcast Chainsaw Massacre. Um, 
What about the last podcast on the left? That is taken. Is it? Yeah. Of and when I, when I saw that, I was like, that is absolutely genius. I thought about exploitation, like I spit on your podcast, or, <laughs> which is kind of cool too. I might even change it to that tomorrow. Um, I even thought just calling a podcast, which is Scream. It only works when there's like a few words or syllables. Anyway, okay. So <laughs> tell me this, Paul. What is your favorite horror movie? What do you think wow. about horror in general? Do you I like it. It's, it's kind of similar to what we do as comedians. We're trying to elicit that uh, uh, involuntary response from yeah. the viewer or the audience. We, we're trying to get them to laugh. Horror movies are trying to get you to, uh, to be scared. Totally. It's an unnatural state. Laughter is not a natural state. Totally. Uh, fr fright is not a natural state. And so it's very similar to what we do. I, I admire the genre. Uh, I enjoy it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's... Because uh, I, I would totally agree with that, because um, both of those genres, they sort of rely on you being a blank slate to a degree. Yeah. I mean, you go in uh, going like into a comedy show or a movie or a horror film going, I might be scared, and you know, some people get like, oh, I'm not going to be scared. But to a degree, they want you to sort of like, just be sitting there, not really expecting anything necessarily. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes you don't get scared, sometimes you don't laugh, but when it gets you, you have no control over it. Um, I think that's really cool. Which sort of ties in, I was talking about the Dario Argento thing earlier, yes. um, about how he says, he calls it the orgasm of death, because when, uh, it's quite romantic, when a person is being stabbed to death, uh, the squeals they let out, uh, if, you weren't, if you weren't there to see it, if you didn't have context, it might sound like they're screaming in joy. And it's that blend of pleasure and pain. Well, usually when I stab people to death, mm -hmm. no, I don't. It's, a, it's interesting you say he calls it the orgasm of death. Of course, they should have said it calls because we're non gender specific here. Oh, sorry. When uh, the for, aforementioned person, yep. uh, when he said that, no, I'm kidding. The, the orgasm of death. Isn't the French word for orgasm le petit mot, which yes. is the little death? Yes. So it's all related. Yes, it all sex ties in. Sex is death. Don't do it, kids. Sex is death. Um, practice safe uh, murder, I guess. Uh, cover yeah. your tracks. Sure. Always gag your victims before you stab them. I, Paul, now tell me, uh, star of the show, what is your favorite horror movie? I, uh, it's sort of, it was the first horror movie I saw in a movie theater. Okay. And it was A Nightmare on Elm Street, coincidentally. Get out of town. It was, and it was creepy because we caught the late show uh -huh. and went home and everything's dark and I'm just sitting in my bed and like, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep. Yeah. Because, uh. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Yeah. Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six. Six, grab your crucifix. Fix. Seven, eight. Six, seven. Oh wait. Seven, eight, never stay up late. Late. Nine, ten, never sleep again. Eleven, twelve. Um, I'm back. Why, do, why does that song not just keep going on? If you're, if you're gonna stay up all night. Because you never sleep, I guess, because you never sleep again, which is, I guess, infinite. But because of that, uh, by proxy, surely Freddy can, like, continue tormenting you. Those numbers should be infinite. Yes. A hundred and one. No more fun. Still no more fun. <laughs> that sucks. I, I was telling someone recently that that's like Johnny Depp's first feature film and they didn't believe me. Yeah, and he was eaten by a bed. He was eaten by a bed. And vomited up. And vomited up. They say, no, he was in 21 Jump Street. I was like, yeah, that wasn't a movie. It is now. And it shouldn't have been. But it is. But yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. And he's like the first character you've seen it to alongside Freddy. That's when Freddy's uh, the silhouette, and he's like a slinky, and he's all like... Yeah. Yeah. Um, he makes it almost to the end. He does. And I, I, I sort of like was wondering this. Apparently, Johnny Depp being in Nightmare on Elm Street was the direct influence for him to become Edward Scissorhands. Was it? Yeah. He, um, he got the idea of Edward Scissorhands, Tim Burton did, from watching Nightmare on Elm Street, and then I guess because, you know, Johnny became his little, um, prodigy. So we calling him Johnny? Like, without the dead bit? 
Johnny became his prodigy, I guess he went, you know what, like he'd be great in that role. But it's interesting. I was like, they seem kind of similar in a way. And yeah, same seed. Mm. Same fucked up seed. What is your <laughs> what is your least favorite horror movie? I don't I'm not a big fan of uh, the child's play movies or, or the Chucky films. Uh-huh. I'm not a big fan of it. It's not even really horror, is it? It's uh, it's just the, the celebration of blood. Yeah. It's uh, it's done in a I like uh, Chucky being the good guy's doll. I've always wanted one of those, by the way, like an actual replica of the doll. I like though that um People assume that there's this one doll, but he's like a rogue doll from a whole uh, mainstream run of dolls. Yeah. And it gets possessed by a serial killer on the run. It's the best undercover, like... Well, okay, in its original uh, incarnation, sure. it was probably a good movie, but by the end, Bride of Chucky... Oh, yeah. Uh, it devolved into less and less of... It's supposed to be funny, though. It is. It was always intended to be funny. It, then it, I think it got away from them, the whole horror genre. Sure, yeah. Then it just became a weird comedy movie. In Bride of Chucky, when uh, Chucky and his bride, I can't remember her name, but it's voiced by Jennifer Tilly, yeah. um, they go to have sex, she goes, you better be wearing a rubber. And he's like, bitch, I'm all rubber. And I thought, uh, that was weird. I always thought that he was like pure plastic. But um, you said something about magic. Yeah, if you want a good... Uh, Haunted toy movie. How about Magic? Magic is a great horror movie. Who is Anthony what? Hopkins Anthony plays Hopkins. a ventriloquist whose uh, dummy turns against him. Okay, I've heard of it. I haven't actually seen it. Yeah. So I have to go back and do my viewing. You must. The possessed ventriloquist doll, I think, is quite creepy. It is, and it's it plays into everyone's fears that these things are creepy to begin with. But the yeah. the eyes that move back and forth. And, and I think unlike Toy Story where the toys do move completely on their own. Uh, ventriloquists are made to be brought to life by people. So there's that fine line of who's doing what, I think. Right. I saw a movie called Triloquist, which was not good, about a, um, a girl who was really messed up in the head. She inherits her parents' ventriloquist dummy, and it's, it has a mind of its own, and it doesn't turn on her, and they go around America killing people, sort of like Bonnie and Clyde. But it was called Triloquist? Yeah. Mm. Not where I would break the word. No. <laughs> Why would you break the word? I don't know. Don't they call themselves Vents? Really? I don't know. Vents. I know that um, I did a gig with Nina Conti earlier this year. Mm. She's really cool. Uh, ventriloquist lady. And uh, I've seen her doco where she goes across the states on a road trip. I can't remember where it is. But there is a, like a famous ventriloquist museum in somewhere like Kentucky, somewhere in bumfuck nowhere, but uh, somewhere you'd hide, hide a whole bunch of uh, like 500 dolls. Of course. Yeah, um, and there was a lot of triloquists there. Um, lots of people who either looked like they have a family uh, that they've now killed, or they want to have a family just so they can kill them. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, the commitment in that. There's a lot of commitment. Okay, you say that you don't think it's very scary. What would your like ideal percentage be of horror to comedy? Because I'm a strong believer that because the laughing and uh, fright, like those involuntary reactions, can be quite close. I like a good push and pull, where mm -hmm. you like you're like ah, and then oh, ah, ooh. is that? I would rather. Be Just made to feel uneasy the whole time. The whole time. Okay. If I'm on a roller coaster, I want thrills. Okay. I want. Uh, okay. I want that uh, from the thing. You don't like laughing on roller coasters. It's a. It's thrill. You, you laugh when you're thrilled. Okay. It's, it's part of the. It's okay. part of that reaction that you get. You don't want a roller coaster where all of a sudden it slows down and for a minute you, you take a scenic ride through a, a diorama of a German village. Circa 1912. You don't care about that. Wouldn't you love if you were at Six Flags and you're on like this roller coaster doing barrel rolls and camel rolls and loop the loops and there's a tiny Rodney Dangerfield with a microphone on the in front of you? Would that not be? No, a, no, that's not what you want. Uh, another comedian, Richard Pryor, perhaps some of the no, classics. No, I mean as good as those guys are, that's not what you want wow. in a in a roller coaster. So you would like you'd swap up. Tiny George Carlin for like a really scary movie. Yeah. Wow. It's, look, you it's heard like, it here first. 
It's a lot like some of these uh, festival sh comedy shows where it has become less comedy and more uh, sad story about this person's life. Yes. Which is great. That's a good uh, one person theater show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a dramatic. Play. It has become like a dramatic reading, hey? Yeah. Because of the festival circuit, everyone feels like at, right at the end, it's like, and that's how I cured my AIDS. <gasps> yeah, and everyone claps, but no one says, where the fuck's my cure? Mm. But it's just occurred to me, Carlin's dead, so that actually would be kind of scary. Yeah, if, uh, the, the ghost of Carlin. Carlin the ghost of Carlin. In a horror movie. Oh my god, he would be so foul. What a foul mouthed ghost he'd be. Wouldn't he be? Yeah, he'd yeah, be he'd, my favorite ghost. He'd send his swears right through the walls. Um, do you? How do you feel about shaky cam horror movies? Do you prefer like a professional rig that looks like they didn't throw it together overnight? Well, uh, with Blair Witch Project, it was made to look like some idiot shot it on their yeah. own yeah. handheld camcorder. But I heard that they had a huge like professional rig and they didn't turn up. So he's like, "Hi, mom, can I borrow your camera?" And that might be true. And that was a weird accent. Um, do you like that film, Blair Witch? It, it was an interesting film, much better than the sequel. Oh yeah, that sequel was... I never saw it. That's how bad I'm sure it is. It's, uh... Does it progress the story? Like, what happens in it? Well, uh, I think what happens in the sequel is people watched the original and then decided to go looking for uh, trouble themselves. Right. How dumb. And the, yeah. So it's it's a meta movie, really. It's a movie about a movie. Okay. The which sort is of always a bad idea. It's a bad idea. I mean, that sort of happened with Scream. Uh, Scream. Uh, well, all of the Screams are quite self-referential, but The Ring too. How then it becomes like when they start. I do like in movies when they reference events from the other movie. You where sure? where you're like, oh wow, it's in the same universe, but it clearly happened in very different locations. Um, like Human Centipede. Have you seen that? Yeah. So Human Centipede 1 is supposed to be like a fictitious, schlocky horror movie. And then uh, Human Centipede 2, the um, antagonist hires that movie out. So suddenly it is... Um, sorry, when you watch the first one, you know it's fictitious, but you're sort of like... This is, this is happening, right. but then in the second one, it's referenced as it actually just being a film. And then the second one then feels more like, uh, like a documentary, which is what makes it so disturbing. Because mm. I feel like it upstages the events of number one. Is there a third one? Yeah. When the, um, the killer from number two enlists the actor who plays the killer in number one. Because he's not a real killer, he is an actor. And they're both insane, and then they join together like uh, six million Jews or something, some number. Um, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of <laughs> the human, the Juman sent to Jew. No. Uh, yeah, the trailer. Watch the trailer. It looks disgusting. Okay. Um, tell me this, Paul. Uh, out of males and females, who do you think has the potential to be scarier? as an on-screen uh, performer. Well, it's always the, the sucker punch, the, the left hook from nowhere, if the woman is the killer. Yeah. And so that, that's got that going for it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think it's far more guys are the villains mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. than are females. And um, they can use that to their advantage, like right. you said, right hook. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I Just give me something interesting. Uh, and I, I love it. Is it sexist that we're like, yeah, I can't be her. She's got titties. Yeah. But there's probably guns under those titties. Um, Is this a Robert Rodriguez movie? <laughs> he would have gun titties. Yes. He has had gun titties. He has. He has a gun cock in, um, from Dust Till Dawn. That's right. And that guy, Fred Williams, I believe his name is, was the original um, black exploitation actor. And he um, got really mad at Quentin Tarantino that he wasn't Django. Uh, and Quentin was like, you're too old. Which he is. But yeah, so he, he was in the original Dolomite films. So he like sort of uh, developed that black cowboy 
role. Well, maybe he could have been the Sam Jackson character in Django. He, he should have been. But that's the motherfucking Sam J. You know, that's what he gets hired to do, the same motherfucker. It's, it's the one that says bad motherfucker. I bet you he's never fucked anyone's mom. Ooh. And that's on a bad day, you know. But so you reckon women. I think, yeah, I mean, we don't want to give any spoilers, but I've seen, I've got some, a few movies in mind where there's a great left and or right hook uh, at the end where you're like, wow, I did not know it was going to be her. She's so pretty, and she wears dresses. Mm. And I, de- I saw her cooking, I saw, like, unless she has, you know, probably poisonous vegetable oil, maybe her broom doubles as a rifle, some, another sort of Ro- 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 Robert Rodriguez things. Did you like that stutter? It started real, and then I continued, in case it developed into something. I thought you were beatboxing. Okay. <laughs> Here um, so this is Paula Garter's uh, horror movie. Where, where and when is it going to be set, do you well, think? Uh, I think not enough horror movies mm-hmm. are uh, uh, out there that take place in the past. Okay. You know, you've got futuristic horror movies, yes. like that Sam Neill film where, uh, is it Event Horizon? Yeah. Yeah, good movie. In the future. They do love the future. How past are we talking? Oh, oh, I think the further back, the better. Like Elizabethan? No, much further back. Oh, wow. We're yeah. talking about, like, which caveman hit like, that a, bitch a, a with a lipto. Okay. Oh, wow. That had, like, tropes of a horror movie, I guess. I thought it was pretty creepy. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, um... Right, okay. So we're talking, like, Aztec times. Yeah, or maybe even further back, caveman days, if that's I think a caveman horror movie, if that was like pure horror, and somehow they managed, somehow you managed to like captivate us and hold us there, that would win Oscars. Yeah, and because it's not about silly dialogue, there's no joke after somebody dies. It's all about, it's going to be a good actor that pulls this off. You were saying something before about, uh, imagine like doing, yeah, like a silent film, so it's all like intertitles. Yeah. So that would be the caveman. So you'd never know what was going to be happening because it was hiding behind a placard. <laughs> it's behind you. What? Hello, my dear. Like that bit of text was behind. Have the dinosaurs stopped crying? Have no. the dinosaurs stopped crying? Okay, so we're going to set it then. Um, what? Uh, who would the killer be? Like, what's the? Uh, what's the? What's the situation here? Mm, good one. Is well, it a bunch of like, you know, generic Neanderthals? This is uh, maybe you know what? It's a guy. It's one of the Neanderthals or Cro-Magnon or whatever it is. I was gonna say yeah, Cro-Magnon. who has begun to evolve. Okay. And whereas they used to be a peaceful uh, type of civilization. Okay. As you evolve, okay. you become more evil. Okay. And it's pretty it's a good metaphor for society wow. in general. Okay. Are we gonna call this uh, Facebook iPhone? Is that the name of this film? <laughs> yes. No. IROC. Hmm. Okay, so this guy's evolving. I what would his weapon of choice be, do you reckon? And let's let's steer clear of the rocks and clubs, I think. It's gotta be something sinister and unexpected to them. To these, to these cave people. A dildo. That would be... Uh, right. Actually, scientists have, and archaeologists have unearthed uh, prehistoric dildos. Okay. And uh, so, I mean, it did exist in their time. Okay. But what do you reckon it would be? Mm. He has... Uh, maybe they're in a, a, Not an agrarian culture, but they've domesticated... Mm-hmm. Uh, Cows. Mm-hmm. So this guy has. Uh, <laughs> Did he ride an evil cow? No, he's made a, a cow suit. Oh, okay. This is getting creepy. Yeah, and he would, you know, he he covered himself in cow uh, hide. Hide. Yeah. And, and then uh, he'd hide. Yes. What he hide in a a patch of cows? Yeah, or, or I don't know. And he'd make noises in the night. And uh, the guy would come on like, hey, what's what's happening to my coward? And he'd come out uh, from his cave. How about we do that um, that famous scene from the end of the film? (sighs) 
there you go. That's the end. Okay. I, uh, I guess they didn't interact back then. Um, <laughs> what, what is his motive for uh, killing people? I feel like that's, that's the crux of a good horror film. Oh, but why? Yeah. Uh, hmm. I don't know. It, does, he, does modern man need a motive to kill? Modern man does it because it suits him. Okay. Wow. And maybe even he feels like he's doing the world a favor because these are less evolved sure. creatures. Okay, humans. that's good. That's good. So we've got sort of like a superiority complex coming on. Yeah. A god complex. Maybe even a bit of solipsism. He thinks that he is the only person who exists. Mm. The only person worthy of... Um, okay. So he takes them out one by one. We still didn't decide on a weapon. What do you reckon it is? Well, I think like a mammoth tusk would be really cool. Ooh, okay. Are they, I know that cartoons tell us they uh, existed together, but I don't know if... Sure they did, right? No? Okay. Or we could go like anachronistic and it can be like a mechanical... He rides a mechanical mammoth from the future. Uh, again, though, the future, we don't... We don't want no future. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's at, maybe he's actually created, uh, you know, he was the first guy to uh, work metal. Oh, wow. Okay. Like he's a metalsmith. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, not a proper metalsmith, but he's begun as he's evolving. Okay. He's learning to create these new tools. Okay. Wow, so he's so like the first scientist. Yeah. Yeah, right. I guess every scientist in their generation is probably going to be crazy and thought, you know what? Let's kill off these uh, little cockroaches. Yeah. And after that, kill all my co-workers. <laughs> Wait, this got real. It got real. Alright. Okay, before we leave, uh, is there anything you would like to plug? Now, this isn't going up immediately, but it will go up soon enough if you've got some shows coming up in the States, and if you know about any dates next year. Okay, well, I, um, I'd like to plug things, but our, uh, I'm from America, and our plugs are differently shaped than you have in Australia. Oh, okay. Uh, however, if this is coming out in November, I uh, am doing a two-week run in Hong Kong at the Takeout Comedy Club wow. in Soho, uh, mid-November through the, through the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're not uh, putting this out until late January, perhaps, okay. I return to Malaysia and do shows there at the end of January. Very, very cool. And before we leave, Paul, would you like to give us your best death rattle? What does it sound like? When Paul Agata gets killed in the heart. Wow. Uh, it's, it's the orgasm of death. I think we're in intermission. I think you can go for it. All right. Uh, and how am I dying? What is the... What is the uh, you decide. Oh. Uh, mammoth tusk to the left nipple. Mammoth tusk to the left nipple. Right through the heart. Uh, well, it would have to puncture my... Oh, yeah. It aorta. punctures. And well, at first I would be like, hey, what? What? Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I need gurgle on the blood. Wow. <laughs> uh -oh. And I don't know if you die with your eyes open or closed, but I think I think I'll be looking at the tusk at the time. So, <clears throat> is it racist? I feel like I was just watching the end of a, a doco about Pearl Harbor. Um. Uh, yes. Okay. Good, I'm glad that we cleared that up. I did see that you did a gig, Pacific Rim Comedy. Yes. And that, it is called the Pacific Rim, around that. Sure. Because I just remember at the beginning of the film, Battleship, if you've seen that, it's in Hawaii and the movie starts with an American and Japanese soccer team. Yes. I thought that was a bit on the nose. That can't even hit my nose. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, Paul Agata. It is a pleasure to have you. Thanks for and having me. And this has been a podcast on Elm Street. <laughs>